All right. So a lot of body blows uh, set to hit the hitting or set to hit the economy in short order here. Um, you mentioned the um, you, and, and by the way, I should say all those are happening too at a time where national tax receipts are declining from where they were last year. Right. So expenses up receipts down. That's not a good equation. You mentioned the employee retention credit. Uh, I know you've been doing a lot of work around this. I don't think many people know what it is. I think I've mentioned it once briefly on this channel before. Can you just tell folks uh, what exactly it is and, and why the statute you just mentioned are important? Because it's a good example of that jamming of the fiscal accelerator of the economy that I think most folks didn't really even realize was going on. So think of think of the Paycheck Protection Program as, as the pint you order when you go into the pub. And we know that the fraud was into God knows the hundreds of billions and that we're, we're prosecuting that now and it's making a lot of headlines and, and good for prosecutors for rooting out the fraud. So think of the Paycheck Protection Program as the great big frothy Guinness pint you order when you sit down. The employee retention credit is the shot chaser that comes <laughs> after it. And what Good occurred analogy. when 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 Biden expanded the employee retention credit created out of the CARES Act to have employers who retained employees during COVID, even though their business was interrupted, you couldn't double dip, by the way, most people are, but you could not double dip with the Paycheck Protection Program loan and the employee retention credit. But we've seen a wave of people doing just that. So what began with 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 the the legislation that Trump signed into law with the CARES Act, it's about up to $21,000 of payroll taxes that you could claw back if your business is interrupted in the year 2020. That was expanded by the Biden administration in 2021 to encompass not just companies that had their businesses interrupted also through the third quarter of 2021, but also miraculous phoenixes rising out of the ashes in the form of startups that were created because of the pandemic. Yeah. God bless America. So how much easier, oh, and by the way, up to $26,000 per employee that you could claw back. So miracle of miracles, I know you won't believe it, Adam, but startups took off for the races. And the IRS is wise to the fact that most 99% of companies that were going to, to claim this employee retention credit have long since done so and paid out. And yeah, I, I joke about Kevin O'Leary, but he's only on financial media every 15 minutes you know, with, with clockwork because he's actively advertising, quote unquote, don't leave your money on the table He's joined by GetRefunds.com, Innovation Taxes. People, most people have heard of Wonder Trust. Most people have heard of GetRefunds.com, but they don't connect it to a government program that if you had paid out July's $30 billion per month, would have pumped $400 billion into the U.S. economy on an annualized run rate. It's about one and a half percentage points of GDP, but it has been putting in 15, 20, 28, $25 billion a month into the U.S. economy in addition to the infrastructure spending that was coming out of the fiscal side. And it's it's little wonder that the U.S. economy hasn't gone into recession because this employee retention credit uh, that is not even, even uh, for accounting purposes, a, a government transfer, it's simply reduced income taxes paid for the purpose of Uncle Sam's accounting, but it's pumped billions of dollars into the hands of well-to-do Americans who've taken advantage of the system. So I write about it often. I'm publishing on it this week again, because my hat's off to the IRS. When would I ever say that? <laughs> uh, they have approached Congress and asked for an early end to this program that they have acknowledged is probably now predominantly fraudulent claims. And that is going to leave a dent. Okay. in more spending. I would remind you, very simple, write this one down, folks. The top quintile of income earners in the United States of America account for more than 40% of U.S. consumption, which is 70% of U.S. GDP and 18% of global GDP. You take money away from that cohort, you're going to see it show up in reduced consumption. All right. So we've had this stealth stimulus going on through this program. 
uh, that not many people have been aware of. It's been largely going into the pockets of the top 20%, as you mentioned. So it's been unfair, uh, unjust in terms of who's benefiting and who's not. Um, that has been helping stoke consumption. You know, we're a 70% a consumer-driven economy. And you're basically saying that money spigot's getting turned off now or is in the process of getting wound down and if the IRS has its way, maybe fully shut off. Um, and that that is another one of these shoes to drop that you mentioned earlier, sort of in your perfect storm list of things that are going to dampen the economy going forward. You're nodding as I'm saying all of this. Yeah, so, you, you've uh, just rattled off one, two, and three. The bankruptcy cycle has resurged. The layoff cycle and closing down of locations has also resurged. And a large source of income for your highest propensity to spend Americans has also been crimped. Okay. So I've I've made a dad joke on this channel several times that I'm going to change my my name to Adam Laggart, uh, just to help people really reinforce the, the understanding that the lag effect is real. And even if it hasn't fully manifested yet, it is going to. We haven't dodged that bullet. The no landing scenario is highly unlikely, to put it gently. Um, I believe you're in this camp, correct? <laughs> I, I'm definitely in this camp. Uh, I, I understand that that Wall Street has its own much bigger camp, but um, that that's okay, Adam. We can go off and have a camp of our own. Oh gosh, if I'm in a camp with you, Danielle, I don't care who. I don't care where anybody else well, is, as long I as, as I'm you, in the same it camp. It will be a you. glamp. So, anyways, yes, a glamp. I love it better. All right. Um, well, look. So, a couple other things wrapped up in this, um, and thank you because you're taking this exactly where I want to go. Um, Let's get back to the Fed for a moment. Um, you know, Powell has been as consistent as he has been, like him or not, because he sees his job as getting inflation under control, right? Killing that inflation dragon. And in his mind, you know, he has defined that as back to 2%. Uh, and there's a lot of chatter right now, you know, trial balloons maybe being floated by Larry Summers and others of, well, maybe we rise it up to 3% and then we can just sort of declare mission accomplished and move on with our lives, right? Powell is not saying that, at least not yet. So first question for you is, is how likely do you think he's going to, how, how successful is he going to be in taming inflation from here? Because you mentioned his focus on services inflation, and that's where the sticky stuff is. And we have all this other stuff coming down that you've mentioned. Um, but it is pretty sticky, and I'm wondering, I've posited, are we potentially seeing the Pareto principle where the, the first 80% was the easy stuff to get rid of, and the remaining 20% is the hard stuff to get rid of? So could this last, could this inflation battle last longer than folks are expecting, or do you expect them to be successful in the shorter term? So it's not so much that I expect Powell to be successful because he's netting shelter out of his calculus. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then you're going to have the portion that remains, which does include health care, which is 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 poised to reaccelerate. Yep. You are going to have that as an offsetting factor going forward. If you're even if you're you're just looking at the at the CPI at the headline level, but we have to bear in mind that shelter is twice the weight of health care. Mm -hmm. in the CPI. So I, I I do think that he's going to be able to get inflation under control the way the average American reads the headlines. Does that mean that a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk is, start, is not appreciably more expensive than it was prior to the pandemic? Yeah, that, that's absolutely correct. But I think that the headline and core CPI as reported I don't think he's going to have trouble getting them back down towards the 2% level. Well, okay. his core net core service is net of shelter. It is actually never really, it's designed to never be negative. So as long as he focuses just on that, but he's going to have some pretty mad politicians as a factor of time going forward.